please. Why don't we introduce yourselves? <laughs> Charles, the working department. I can talk for that. Uh -huh. There I am. I Abby and Linda. Okay, I'm Lauren. I'm the Lauren A. Uh, first meeting. So, well, I don't know what else you'd like me to say. Oh. Well, why, why did you come? Uh, I'd like to get more involved in the neighborhood. Great. And where do you live? I live on Beale Street. You need more Beale Street to participate. <laughs> I'll call my neighbors next time. And then Chris has reappeared in my life after 20 years. Oh, really. Maybe most of you know, maybe some of you may remember me from my time on the street about 15 years ago, longer. Uh, but I'm here today to talk to you about the forum in my capacity as a Treasury Marketplace Commissioner. Uh, I'm one of the newly appointed resident commissioners and just wanted to get some feedback from folks that live and work in the community about the situation in, in downtown and on Portland Church Street. Uh, I attended one of y'all's meetings last uh, fall in September, October, and uh, there was some really good insight there. So. I just wanted to open that door and let you know that we're open to invite meetings on the third Wednesday of the month uh, from 9 to 11 in the Butcher Conference Room. Thank you. So, uh, Chris, what might be helpful would be let Linda Rizzi know the agenda when the meeting is going by evening or something. I right. get the, the NPA. Okay, there you go. All right. That was announcements, introductions, and speak out there. Like that, so we're moving on to Chris Thank you. Um, the way that it was asked on why we we split from more block, and I think it was felt that the time was ready for us to have more of a voice about our concerns and not necessarily um, share the oxygen with. Essentially, in my estimation, it became UEM and the hospital. And those are important to our community, but our concerns are a little bit different than the big institutions, which dominate more of one. And even though we may be a very small group, I think we need an opportunity for at least people in the board to get to know each other and then also to make the accommodation of trying to bring in more people to the board, NPA, and board participation um, somehow. And so I, I was in favor of us forming our own NPA. Keith is the one who actually, I think you quit the protest. No, no, I didn't. I just thought you were telling me issues that you wanted the, or not you specifically, the group was telling me issues you wanted the NPA, uh, Orange One and Eight to, to uh, discuss. And it seemed that they, uh, we were not necessarily, and uh, Hannah King was, was also on it. Wasn't necessarily uh, moving as fast as we thought we should be to deal with those issues. So um, we we decided that they had they had their issues, we had ours, and we needed to really have a chance to have the ward eight people um, voice them. I didn't. I, I did not leave in protest. They have they have certainly have the, their issues that they want to deal with, and they actually don't really apply to us that much. So. Um, that's why we, that's why as a group we all decided we needed to, to be independent so that we could talk about the issues that I think people are talking about in this board. And I'm hoping people will bring forward those issues uh, so that we'll know what they're thinking. One of the issues we've heard a lot about was the redistricting, so that's why our first committee is on that. But we're hoping that people will bring forward issues that they'd like us to uh, discuss and uh, Bring in people to give us more information about. I, I'd also like to introduce Linda Rivsey, who uh, everything I know about the NPA I learned from Linda. Um, Linda has has been on the Ward Eight representative for many years, right? Um, at one time it was Ann Brenya, it's been Emily Lee, it's my turn now. But Linda is kind of the bridge between um, past and, and current Ward Eights. But Linda, can you tell us a little bit about? Your, you know, where you live, why you think this is important, what you hope to accomplish. Nothing, so nothing. I, maybe. I think, hi, I'm Linda Risby. I live in uh, on Hunger for Terrace in Warren Eight, and Bill is exaggerating my contributions. But I was on the MPA steering committee for a little over a year, um, and uh, I just echo maybe what Keith said, which is that. 
we have uh, concerns that are special to our ward and I'm really looking forward to having a chance for, for Ward 8 residents to be able to have a voice and speak out and uh, to be heard. And so one of the things that we're experimenting with at this meeting, knowing that we're a smaller group, is to try to have it be a little bit more um, our point of view, not so much a reflection of our view through the city, which I think some of the NPAs are, that the, uh, the, the political class are sitting in the, in the meeting and they have a point as they should, but sometimes we, that influences what's talked about, the viewpoints that are allowed, and I think we want to try to have it be more us and not so much our beloved city councilors and state representatives, although they should be at this meeting. And so, Ali, I hope you don't mind that um, we're going to try to engage you with our thoughts and then look to you for leadership or distilling what we say and, and your views of things and other people who aren't here's views and so that we can maybe be uh, a more effective component of the whole state enterprise here. Because I think, I think that uh, voices are lost in Burlington. And as you can just see from the attendance here, although we have to take it, it's our fault it didn't get organized correctly. Um, we have to get more people in the rooms. And so I hope we can do that and there'll be more discussion. Um, so that's kind of what I'm doing. Um, so we will try to finish by 11 that we're small. I'm, I'm big about start a meeting on time, end on time. And we all on a beautiful Saturday, last one of the last in Sunday, you don't want to hear me talk. So um, any other speak outs? Any, anybody else have anything they want to say? Sam, you allowed to talk? Can't call on you. Sam is good. <laughs> um, we're also trying to have, in order to have more focused discussion is to have single topic or two topic meetings where we don't discuss the broad array of all the issues that we face because we tend to hear the same things. And we'd like to maybe take one issue and have more discussion about that, more viewpoints um, and more time than simply run down the list of of all the topics that get talked about all the time at the meetings. And, and so you may have a something you really wanna talk about. Either at the beginning of the meeting, you can have your say or talk to us and we'll try to get it on the agenda so we can have more discussion about a single topic. This week's topic, this month's topic is redistricting. Um, this is the basis of how Ward 8 came to be. And for those of you who were here at the time, it was a little bit of an odd, duck but we've existed and i think it's done very well in many ways and not so well in other ways and i know that keith and linda at the steering committee felt this was a very important issue for us um ali do you know what the when this is going to be voted on and what the process of accepting this is even up through the state level yeah so um it's funny because everybody I, I think sort of on on council has sort of their different differing opinions of when they'd like to um vote on it um i know at the state level from what i've heard um just talking to folks um definitely sometime next um session but it's um yeah it's it's difficult just because i think there's um a lot of um competing opinions and the solution that i that from what i understood um, made most people on the council happy um, is something um, that the mayor has said he would veto, um, which was the eight ward two rep map. Um, and so now we have this um, new proposal um, for the seven ward 12 councilor um, map. And um, so I think people are and still reviewing it. That seems to be sort of the front runner um, at this time, but um, yeah, unfortunately, um, yeah, unfortunately that's sort of the, um, like the extent to, um, the consensus that we've come to. So I, 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 I didn't hear the process in there. I didn't hear that on this day, we have this meeting to discuss this. And then there's a, a revise, a revision and it goes to the council again, or back to the NPAs or to the state. It, what what is the actual process? Yeah, um, 
Yeah, unfortunately, um, I'm not entirely sure. Um, I don't know. I don't even know if there is a clearly defined process at this point. I think there are so many um, things being thrown out. The process is kind of getting a little bit um, convoluted, but I can definitely check with um, like the person who I know is sort of taking um, a little bit of that um, role. Um, and I can also check with Karen Paul as well. Um, to try and figure that out. But I know that, you know, um, I know Karen is really pushing to vote on this issue so sooner rather than later. And um, so we can have some some answers. Okay, so Linda or Keith, you do you understand the process at all? Keith, you might. Well, I do. Uh, and, but I, I have, can I, can I, I guess I, I want to sure. start the conversation on redistricting. I was here, I've lived in my house on University Terrace for 49 years. And I've always wondered why we were sort of segregated from the rest of my, the ward. But I was, because we were in Ward 1 for many, many years, and well, 40, 46 or seven years. And I ran for school board and I found that it was very difficult for me to get elected because nobody knew me in my neighborhood. I was a totally different neighborhood. I, uh, and, and I never really kind of didn't think about the fact I lost twice before I got elected. And then I realized when, when Shannon, uh, Joan Shannon talks about electability, that you need a board that's compact so people know each other. And uh, so I kind of got through that. And then, uh, while I was on the school board, I, they were talking about redistricting, and I assumed that they would do a good job for, for all of us. And then the next thing I know, I'm in a new ward with, with uh, next to 4,000 plus students who I can't access if I'm going to run for school board. So it, it just was very frustrating to me. And um, when I look at this seven ward map, I know it's a compromise. Basically, the bottom line is I can see where you're going to we're going to end up probably the same numbers of progressives and uh, Democrats and others uh, with this with this new uh, sub, with this new seven ward map. You probably have seven. We'll probably have six six, and I think that's probably what generates why we are why we have our redistricting is so that people can maintain their power, their party power, which doesn't necessarily help out the neighborhoods. Sam, can you pull that map up? Do you have access to pull that up? Um, I don't. Okay. But I could I could just say that uh, you know I've always wanted to be in uh, neighborhoods with uh, where we're close by uh, with families that our kids go to school with that we interact with, but never get to see at the polls <laughs> because we've always had to be in a distant way and. That is one thing. I'm also concerned that Ward 6 has taken on a lot of students. If we're taking on the 4,000 plus, on, on uh, and then they say that UBM hasn't really given the right number of beds. So I don't know if that's, there may be 1,200 more beds on that campus, plus Champlain campus. That really puts a lot of students that we probably, as any candidate, doesn't have access to, which means that uh, students inside their their housing situations are able to uh, campaign and get their candidates. And it kind of leaves those of us who are longer term residents uh, without a lot of uh, influence in the vote. So that is a concern for me, but th the fact that I'm in Ward 6 is a beginning. And it makes me feel like, okay, maybe now we're accepted <laughs> as, a, as a, uh, a street that is, uh, a lot of families on the street, a lot of children as well. It's a mixture. I think it's an integrated mixture of students and families that works that's be, that is working uh, reasonably well right now. That's my opinion. There it is. Yeah. So um, I'm gonna. I think it's okay for me to ask people to speak up, right? Yeah. Um, and you can say no. Linda, I know that there were some meetings this early summer that resulted in a list of some principles that we felt would assist the redistricting process. Do you remember what those were? I remember it, it, the attitude was that it's a, 
you know, how do we increase democracy in the city? Um, and how do we help with some of the, how can redistricting help get through some of the gridlock, which there is occasionally? And um, why don't you, um, since you remember it and I, my, yeah. everything I on my computer has been wiped. So I'm, um, why don't you, um, why don't you go and describe those things? So um, I'm only going to tell you what Ann Brenya, I wish Ann Brenya was here because she has the memory in the family. Um, <laughs> one of the principles that I remember was that we felt it was better for the students to be in multiple wards than in a single ward, that their voice would then be broadened a little bit throughout the city. And that was a good thing that, you know, the, the, the new North End wards may not have an abundance of students, but if there was a way that they participated in that ward, it would, it may be, it would be better for students and for all of us. Um, Keith, you were in those meetings. You remember? Well, I thought we wanted a balance. We kind of wanted a balance of students and uh, longer term renters or uh, longer term um, uh, homeowners. And th that was one of the things and we thought that uh, sort of splitting up the uh, student population would be better for, for the students and uh, give everybody a chance to uh, have a chance to have democracy rather than uh, not have a chance for be their side being elected. Um, the, the thing that, uh, that I think, uh, well, <laughs> we, I, I, I forgot what I was gonna say, but I think it was making sure that there's a balance so that everyone felt like they had a say. Chris, I believe you were at some of the, were you in the steering committee for that? What? On the ward, the input from the wards for the redistricting at the beginning of the process? Very briefly at the beginning. Okay, okay. But there were a whole list of suggestions that were made up. I was somewhat cynical at the time that they were gonna be used. Allie, they're available. Um, I hope that they do enter into some of the the voting discussions about, because there was a fair amount of effort. And I think it was sincere effort on the people who went to this. And uh, I'd like to see some of that be represented in the final outcome. Uh, Laura, have you been through redistricting yet? Okay. Um, if you're lucky, you won't be with Keith and me after the, it's been done. Wait, Laura, do you have a, Lauren, do you have an idea about this redistricting or have you seen the map? And Okay, Dre, do you have any point? Bill, you want to make? I turned over. Uh, I think it would be beneficial for the students to be spread out because it is high turnover and it's also a different, you know, you get a lot of different viewpoints. So it encompasses having that high turnover so you don't lose some of the people that are leading the uh, different wards, but you also get new ideas cycling in with the new students. One thing that I've noticed through the years is that there's a group of students, Allie being one of them, who have are talented um, activists um, caring people who want to help in city government and you can we, we all we need that kind of help but as their life changes they're here only a short period of time and they move on or they they don't want to live on Beale Street after a few few years they, they move to someplace else and so um, how do we keep them active and engaged no matter where they live in the city and I think that's a I think we need to draw into that more so than we're often accused of being anti-student, and I don't think that's true at all. I, I think that the idea behind redistricting is to um, give more people a voice, not just those who happen to, uh, you know, win an election, which is what's often pointed out to me sometimes. Yeah. So, um, are there other other? This is going to be a great meeting because we're going to end real quick. Um, are there other inputs on this, Linda? Um. Well, let me give him some, let me give that some thought. Um, you know, some of the issues have been addressed with the compactness and I do think the students are being spread out some more. Um, um, 
I, I don't know whether this is something that would be okay to ask, but I don't understand why the mayor will reject a, and maybe it's a moot point and not worth spending time on, but we are going, we're going to be having this, it seems like we're keeping with a, some kind of district system with this seven ward map. Is that correct, Allie? Yes. Uh, or, or no, it's, um, no, it's still going to be, so it's going to be two counselors per ward with the exception of, I believe, ward seven. Let me take a look at the map. Um, oh, I believe the exception so one ward would have one counselor. Yes, um, and that was um, sort of a, a compromise of the old North End and new North End really wanting to remain. Wards um, three and seven will have one counselor. Three and? And seven. Three and seven. Seven on the map. Yeah. So how many, what is the population of, of, the, of the ward three on this map? Because that would be the ward that we're in. Would we become ward three? They're talking, this is the target population. It's on, it's on the map that I gave you. That for the one district, which for the one counselor, it was 37, uh, 3,729. For the two counselors, it was 7,457. Okay. And Ward 3 would have how many counts, how many? What's the, tar the population expected? Their target is 3,729. Okay. Um, Keith, I wonder if we're looking at different number. I mean, it's it's probably not that big a difference, but the number that I have is um, 3,824. Well, we could be. I just took what I got from, uh, I didn't get what I got from um, uh, Nancy on Wednesday. I, I, have things changed since then? Um, I, uh, not that I know. I don't know why it's showing a different number. Okay. Well, we're, uh, we're, so, we're somewhat close, though. <laughs> yes. you're, 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 yeah. So I feel a little bit, um, you know, like this is really at odds with the, uh, con I understand it's the conventional way of doing things, but, um, and maybe I'm not just thinking outside the box, but, uh, to deny people to counselors. I, I would like an explanation of why the two counselors, eight wards will be vetoed. Yeah, so, um, and this is something that I, I personally am pretty, um, uh, pretty frustrated by. Um, uh, the mayor seems to um, feel that that is um, too many city councilors. Um, he does. He is not in favor of a 16, um, 16 person city council. And I um, personally don't think we can go wrong with more representation. And I, um, you know, I mean, from the start, I've I've supported the uh, eight uh, eight ward two rep map. Um, so you know, but uh, I guess um, that seems to be a pretty hard line in the sand um, for him. And I I mean, you know, it's not just um, progressives that were um, you know supporting that um, you know that map so I you know I, I don't fully understand um, has, the reasoning but has the um, has the city council or the mayor or anybody engaged in any conversations around whatever the issues are about having two representatives um, uh, whatever that Prob whatever the problem is, has, has any discussion happened about easing that problem? Because this is a very odd solution to have one representative when, you know, maybe there are some things that could happen in the city that would, um, could kind of, well, just to repeat myself, just to ease the situation. Yeah, I, um, I agree. It's very odd. Um, and, um, so, so what, um, you know, so as I understand it, 
the mayor's reasoning behind, um, you know, not wanting, you know, that is that there, there would be too on the city council. Um, he seems to feel like it would be more difficult to come to consensus um, on issues. And I, I personally just don't feel that way. I think the more voices in the room, the better. I think our city's already seen what happens when you try to draw up like weird configurations and maps. Um, and I, I, I think you can't really go wrong with more representation in our city. And so I personally don't feel that moving to a, you know, 16 seat city council would be a bad solution. Um, but I know, wonder if it's even yeah. constitutional to do this because that means that my vote translates and I can only impact directly with my vote one counselor where other people can impact two counselors. And I wonder if that is even copacetic in, in a legal sense. I agree. The other, the other thing it sets up is there are natural associations between wards and it over, um, there's too much power in some wards like ward three and, and ward seven, maybe, you know, we're outvoted together than would be the other wards. And I think nobody's saying that this isn't a political decision to, for one party to be in power versus another one. That's what, why this is done. But um, I, I really think that I agree with Linda that for us to have one counselor for the same number of people just doesn't really make any sense. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I agree. I have still, and I've said, you know, in every single meeting, city council and behind closed doors, I think it would be a mistake not to go with the eight ward two rep map. I'm still in favor of that. Um, you know, and this is, I can definitely bring um, that specific concern about ward three having one rep up on Monday. Um, yeah, it's um has the discussion of the legality of it come up at all? Um not in not in any meetings that I've been in, but that is absolutely an issue that I can raise um because that's a very good point. And then I have another question because originally it seemed like the eight ward two uh counselors was going to be the compromise position that a lot of people supported. And I'm wondering whether there was enough votes to override a veto. That's a good question. Um, I'm not sure there has been, there has been a little bit of um, discussion about that. And um, I think that would probably involve um, me placing a couple of calls, maybe like talking to Karen Paul about that, because I know that Karen was interested as well to see the eight ward two rep map, um, as well as Mark Barlow, but I'm, I'm not sure where they are at in this moment. Um, I feel like sometimes just as people, um, settle sort of on, on one solution and one compromise, there's another map that's thrown at us. Um, and then we kind of go back to the drawing board and, um, it's been a little bit of a frustrating process, um, but I think um, I I think that that's a good that's a good question, and I know that if um, that map was passed and it was vetoed, I would certainly vote to override it. Um, so uh, I'm okay with one counselor as long as you get two votes. <laughs> and actually, Chris Hazley is Chris. What ward are you currently in? Um, Currently, Ward Three. So we can get the the actual Ward Three <laughs> perspective from Chris. Chris, you got a few minutes, yes, and so we will end at eleven fifteen because Sam and Charles very generously came in on Saturday, and we're not going to keep them late. So, wow, thank you so much. So again, this goes back to its functionation of a population. You need to have equal sized wards, one person, one vote, um, and some of the wards grew bigger than others. So uh, that's why we're having this discussion. Um, so the seven by 12 map hybrid model is essentially based on a six word map configuration. So there's a mathematical equation here. I think many of you are familiar with it. You take the total population of the city, divide it by the proposed number of wards, and then you'll get your ideal population. So with the seven by 12 map, they divided the total population by six, which results in a figure of like 
7456 or something. I don't have it in front of me. And then they took the sixth word and cut it in half to come up with words three and seven. So that was, I think, you know, my understanding of how that all came to, to pass there. Uh, big picture. Um, my recollection was we heard a lot of people um, speak. They want two counselors for war, for ward for all of the reasons that are being brought up here. Granted, we do have multi-member districts and single member districts uh, at the state level, but it's got to be done in a way to preserve one person, one vote, which is why wards one or wards three and wards seven have half the population of the other five groups to, to make, meet that standard. Um, what I would say, bigger picture, uh, that would be the disadvantage of the seven by 12 is that not everyone gets two counselors. The seven ward map will inevitably, due to the mathematics involved, take a big chunk out of the old North End and necessarily result uh, in the marriage between a portion of the old North End and the new North End, which seems to be politically untenable from a, a number of perspectives. Uh, and the eight ward map will do a similar uh, job on Ward Seven, uh, Ward One, because the current Ward One is is above the threshold for our existing eight ward map. So, if we wanted to keep eight wards, they would have to go uh, smaller. So, those are the, I think the big dynamics in play. Um, clearly, you know, there's some folks in Ward One that probably aren't going to be folk happy with an eight ward map that's going to maybe move them to Ward Two. Uh, similarly, uh, I think there's some folks both in the old North End and the new North End, that, you know, are really not excited about a shotgun marriage. My point in saying all this, there's really no uh, perfect solution. Um, I just simply say, you know, looking at a solution that's going to benefit the greatest number of people in the cities. Um, in my time of, of drawing maps, and I think those days uh, behind me at this point, um, the thing I tried to focus on primarily was the statutory requirements of so the equal population, uh, cohesive districts, and, and compact districts. Uh, and then the other criteria was the community value of preserving neighborhoods. Um, and I think that preserving the neighborhoods can be done, it's going to be a challenge and it may not be done in a way that makes everyone happy. Um, but at the end of the day, I think the, the statutory requirements really need to be driving this. Thank you. So can I just say that- Yes, please. Go ahead, Lana. I, I understand everything you're saying. This map doesn't have equal population. And it's really, it's not just splitting hairs. Two of the wards have half of the population. That is a huge deviation. <laughs> so I just don't know that, you know, just to kind of repeat myself, I don't know whether or not the one giving one representative to half the population is equal to having equal populations with a 5% deviation. That's a good question. It would surprise me. I thought you wanted four eight voices. Sorry, so sorry. You had your say. Sure. Thank I you. You were directing at me. No, I was, was going to choke you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for. I, I do think it's it's helpful to have other wards weigh in on this. Allie, you've got some 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 thinking to do. We do appreciate you know not only you carrying this forward in our interest, but also reflecting back to us your thoughts. And I, I guess the progressive party thoughts, because that's what it's going to come down to. So we can at least be informed of how this decision is being made, because it does impact us in a big way. The last redistricting impacted us a, a lot, and uh, we just want to be part of it this time. So we appreciate yeah. your help. Well, what happened to you all last time was completely unacceptable and, un and unfair. Um, you know, I just, I, I, I really do not want to see that happen again. Um, yeah. Yeah, I really let appreciate on. that. And uh, sorry, I just want to say that I really appreciate that the new maps uh, are addressing the issue. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, that's, you know, that's the goal. I think, like, I remember the first time when I first got here looking at the Ward 8 map and being like, that, what is that? <laughs> um, you know, like, I was like, come on, that's like, I mean, like, if you look up the definition of gerrymandering, it's like arms. And our board is just two big arms, which makes zero sense to me. Um, and personally, I would rather see, and I'm, I'm not just saying this because I um, am not, a, I'm not at all a career politician. Um, and I, I also hate public speaking, so I get very nervous um, <laughs> at those meetings. But I would rather see a map um, where like, I couldn't get elected, but that's going to be fair for the next 10 years. Um, then see a map that guarantees career politicians in Burlington. That's that's really the bottom line for me. Um, okay, so that, we're going to wrap this up. But before we do this, um, 
I would like to have input. Allie, you're, you're welcome to have discussion too about the topics of these meetings going forward. So the next meeting, which is going to be sometime late September, the two topics that have been discussed in the steering committee has been um, the school budget and the impact that that has on the city. And then the other one was policing, um, both of which I think are important. And if you have strong preferences or if there's other issues that you want to get onto the agenda, let us know so that we it's, it's we talk about what you want to talk about. So, uh, Keith, you want to uh, wrap this up a little bit? Um, I really appreciate you being here, Allie. And this is the first time that we've really actually had an active voice in you know, how we'd like to see the city run. Um, we're trusting that you will make good decisions and and uh, and that we can we can have a democracy in it that reflects what this, all the city wants. Uh, you know, I know that's idealistic, but I'm a, I'm an idealist, and uh, I really appreciate you being here. Um, it sounds like we have an interest in knowing about the school, the high school bond, and we and we know that we have some issues with uh, safety and policing. We want to talk about. And there, there are other issues that I'm sure will come forward that people want to talk about. Maybe a, even affordability of the housing in our district, but we'll see what people say. So Sam and Charles, thanks for coming in yeah. on Saturday. We very much appreciate it. And uh, we'll get you out of here in a few minutes. Do you mind if I, uh, sorry, do you mind if I say one thing before we go? Last word, Allie, you get last word. Oh, sorry, yeah. Um, so I just wanted to kind of be um, very transparent about what's going on. I, um, have not been able to monitor my email inbox as much as um, I really um, would hope. Um, and like I've heard some concerns from folks. Um, and <laughs> just full disclosure, um, I have um, been going through some very um, prolonged and um, truthfully very traumatic life um circumstances and um you know I'm, I'm well supported the cjc is involved um for like restorative justice type stuff um but it's been just a very difficult time with me um given the fact that i also um you know hold two other jobs um and so but i do really want to be available i really really want to hear um folks concerns so um, first thing, I really appreciate, you know, us being able to have this meeting today so that I can come and, and hear you all because this is, this is what I want. I, you know, I want to be able to hear people's voices. And, um, uh, I think, um, secondly, um, I think the best way probably to reach me would be by text or phone call. I hope that for those of you who've reached out in that way, I've, I've been pretty responsive. I don't know, Keith, maybe you can tell me, tell me if like otherwise, but, um, I, so my phone number is listed on the city website. I can also give it to you right now if that's easier. Um, but my number is 240-478-1998. Um, I do have some weird work hours, um, that, fluctuate um sort of depending on what's going on in the club occasionally I have to travel for like it's it's like crisis related stuff it's like a whole um complex issue um and then in the morning I do some like freelance writing so I um I usually am working all day but um on the days that I work from home I'm pretty available um and when not I usually will have to decline a phone call but feel free to follow up with a text um and I, you know, I really try to be as responsive as possible in that way. Yeah, thank, thanks, Allie. That's good to hear. Um, you know, you're here for us. We're here for you. So, yeah. Sam, can you uh, take us? How do we end this? You push a button. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thank and you. Hopefully, it will be better organized last next time. But it, it's been a great start. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank, thank you.